So in this tutorial, we'll look at a couple of different ways of creating basic loops. And both ways are quite easy. One way is a little bit more advanced than the other, but not too difficult. So starting from a default session of Newton, we'll first change some of the initial parameters. Specifically, we'll change the speed to 29 meters per second, which is about 65 miles an hour. And that's about the speed you would expect at the beginning of, an, of a looping element. Uh, and then we'll change the Y position from 20 to 5 meters just to bring the track a little bit closer to the ground. And then we'll change the G-force to what one would expect at the beginning of a loop. Uh, in this case, I'll put in about 3.5 Gs. 3.5 to 4 Gs is usually a good uh, no normal force to, to start off with. So next, you want to make sure that the orientation is changed from its default of Euler to quaternions. And you want to use quaternions in pretty much any sort of looping element. So the loop itself will consist of three sections. In the first section, I like to end with a pitch of about 30 degrees. So we'll adjust the length of the first section so that the end is about a pitch of a thir 30 degrees. And this will form the entrance of our loop. And then the second section will be the body of the loop. So we'll continue the length, adjust the length so that it uh, loops on around. And now to gain a little bit more insight of what's going on, let me turn on the visual fins and switch to normal lateral force. So what this shows us is a, a graphical representation of the force at each point along the track. So in this case, we haven't changed the normal force at all. It's a three and a half Gs along the entire length. And that's not very realistic. We want to make the normal force uh, smaller at the apex of the loop and then get larger again uh, toward the bottom of the loop. And the easiest way of achieving this is with a bump transition. So the one I normally use is this one. And so we'll adjust this now uh, to minus 3 Gs. And like this. And then readjust the length so that uh, the end of, the, of this section is at about the same Y position as the beginning. And you can see that visually here, but also look up here and we can see that uh, it, it ends or begins and ends at about the same Y value. And that, and that creates a more or less symmetric loop. And again, if we look at the uh, force fins, we see that in this section, since this is a bump transition, it starts off with a G force of three and a half Gs. Then it gets smaller uh, toward the middle of the section, and then it gets larger again and ends at three and a half Gs. So that's the function of of the bump transition. And then to create the uh, the pullout, again we just add an, a third section, and that creates our loop. Uh, now we need to uh, do one more thing, and that's to prevent the loop from hitting itself when it comes back around. And we do this by adjusting the roll value of the middle section like so. So we'll add maybe a, a 15 degree roll, or minus 15 degrees. Now if you rotate around, we see that indeed the loop does miss itself on the way down. So that's the first way of creating a loop. It's, it's quite easy. In, in order to change the shape of the loop, the parameters that you want to change is the normal force at the beginning as well as the transition normal force. Uh, you can also adjust the length of uh, the first section so that it ends at uh, more or less than 30 degrees. You can play around with the different parameters to create the shape of loop that, that you want. The second method of creating loops is very similar to the first method. So let me restart to show you that. Again, we'll have a, a speed of 29 meters per second, a normal of 3.5 Gs, and a Y of 5 meters. This time we'll switch to multi-zone force sections. And again, we'll want to make sure that our orientation is a quaternion. And now what we're going to do is have three uh, normal subzones that span a single roll and lateral zone. And so the easiest way of doing this is to lock 
the lateral and roll uh, subzones like this. And then again, we'll proceed exactly as we did before. We'll adjust the length of the normal subzone. You can see that's a normal subzone because uh, of the color of the of the slider. I'll adjust the length so that this section ends at about 30 degrees, a pitch of 30 degrees, like this. And you can see the roll and, and lateral force, or lateral zones, uh, adjust uh, their lengths automatically because they're locked to the length of the uh, normal zone. And then we'll add a second normal zone, which will form the body of our loop and proceed again exactly like, like before. We'll choose a normal transition, uh, a bump transition, minus three Gs. Adjust the length of this uh, subzone so that the, the force is at a minimum at the apex of the loop. And then we'll add a, a third uh, normal zone that uh, completes the loop. So the final step is again to adjust the roll so that the element misses itself when it loops back around. And so we'll just add uh, a roll value of say minus 20 degrees. And you can see now the, the loop uh, will miss itself. And the main difference between this method and the previous method is that now the the roll occurs along the entire length of the element instead of just the center section as before. And this creates uh, a marginally a smoother element. Another diagnostic that you can use to ensure that, that the loop is properly shaped is to examine the vertical radius of the element. And again what we want to see is that the radius is smallest at the top of the loop. And if we can see what happens uh, by exaggerating the effect, so let me uh, decrease uh, the transition from minus three to minus three and a half of the center subsection. So now you see that the loop is flatter at top and as a reflection of that the radius uh, is larger than it is on either side. Uh, and again that's something that we want to avoid. That will result in a vertical pump uh, when you're riding your, your coaster. So let me change this back to three and again adjust the, the length. And in fact I think I'm going to make this about 2.9. So yes, I think that looks much nicer. And there you have it, the basic loop. Nothing to it.